no one there. Can we do evolution? We've already done that. We can do it again. Do you have questions? Uh, I have a question. Was there a dinosaur that lived at the same time? That's what the Bible says. So they did? Yeah. I, I can read. Why is it ridiculous? <laughs> We're proving wrong. Your problem, you've been brainwashed. That's your problem. Brain dirty. You've been brainwashed to believe that dinosaurs were billions of years ago. And then man, then caveman came. You've been brainwashed by your, it's not even science. What evidence? Science what fiction. No, what evidence do you have? It's a fossil. Yeah, all you know about a fossil that died right where it was. All you know about a fossil. Where's Roxy? What does study rocks mean, sir? You know all the dating methods are flawed. Carbon dating, radioactive, they all flawed methods. They start with the presupposition that the world is billions of years old. That's why they date things to be millions of years old. You know, a lady from NC State, listen to this, a professor from NC State, recently in Montana, it's a woman, found a T-Rex bone. They dated, they dated this T-Rex bone to be 65 million years old. You know what they found in this T-Rex bone? Soft tissue. Mary Schweitzer. And science, Mary Schweitzer. And science says that soft tissue only lasts up to 10,000 years. Yeah. What are you going to do with that? See, that's the problem with these dating but They have a bias. And every evolutionary scientist or professor, they have a bias as well. See, we all have the same evidence, friends. Creationists, evolution, all have the same evidence. Well, let's talk about that. I, I'm going to tell you this. Without in the beginning God, no, without in the beginning God, you can't make sense of anything. No? I'm not talking about the Bible, man. I didn't mention the Bible once yet. Okay? But without in the beginning God, you can't prove anything. What's that? Yeah, Bible slab. That's more my thing than mine. So, so uh, do, you, do you believe in morality? Do you believe any, any absolute form of morality? Morality. Any absolute form of morality. Do you believe that rape is absolutely wrong? What about child abuse? What about murder? Okay. If you believe, now, now morality itself, the idea of morality, that rape is wrong, child abuse is wrong, murder is wrong, is that something you can experience through touching it, tasting it, seeing it, smelling it, or hearing it? No, no. You can experience the effect. No, you can't see the idea of morality. You can't see the idea that rape is wrong. You can't see the ramifications of rape. Yeah, you sure can, but you can't see it itself. Now, if you're an evolutionist and you're an atheist or an agnostic, your worldview is a naturalistic worldview. You believe what you can see, taste, you believe in empiricism. That's your epistemology. That's how you receive knowledge, through empiricism. But I'll tell you what. Morality is outside the scope of empiricism. In fact, you can't even prove empiricism with empiricism. You know, so if you believe in morality at all, what's that? What if God made evolution happen and like both people are somewhat right? Well, if, if you believe that, you're not believing what the Bible said, that's for sure. The Bible doesn't say the Bible says seven days. That does. 24 hour day. The Hebrew word in Genesis 1 for day is young. It always means a 24-hour day, especially when a modifier is added to it. Morning and evening, the first day. Never in Hebrew literature mean anything else but a literal 24-hour day. So you have, a, you have a contradiction here. I feel like there's things that humans can't comprehend that God has done, and that a human couldn't write something that God has done correctly. There might be a mistake. What? Why is that? Why, why can't I write down what God tells me? God is almighty. Right, maybe he didn't, but maybe he did. Well, let's, let's, get back, let's get back to the point here. The point is that in an atheistic, naturalistic universe, when all you know is what you know empirically, there is no morality, friends. There's no morality. You can't touch morality. You know, there's ideas in your head. I didn't say you can touch God. But if, if you don't believe in God, you can't believe in morality either. That's the point you need to come to. There is. No, no, I, I didn't say atheists aren't moral, or they don't say it's morality. I'm saying that the atheist universe can't account for morality. Why not? Because in the atheist universe, everything's naturalistic. Everything is through empiricism. What you can see, 
taste, touch, smell, and hear. But you can't experience morality through your five senses. Morality is an idea in your head. You know, if you're an evolutionist, people just came back by random processes through billions of years. You know what? Maybe that chunk in your brain is talking about morality is really wrong. Maybe it's malfunction. Maybe murder's okay. Maybe technically it's really the way it's supposed to be. Maybe rape's okay. But that's where an atheistic universe leads to. So the Bible says when a Christian go to heaven, they'll be like the angels, but you're not going to be an angel. No, angels are a different person altogether, different types. Yeah, if you're an atheist or an agnostic, you have no reason to believe in morality. You have no right to believe in morality. Right, they don't. Because morality is not something you can experience through your five senses. You're being inconsistent, atheist. You're putting all atheists in the same block. Atheist just means you do not have a belief. It doesn't mean that your belief is in science. No, a atheism means A negates, theism means God, no God. And without God, there is no morality. Are people still becoming angels now? No, there's no angels. God created angels in the game. No one becomes an angel. So there's no morality, friend. Wait, take a break from it real quick. If you don't want to call them morals, let's call them principles, all right? No. So I'm agnostic. Okay, but I still have principles. Like, that's why, like, I'm vegan. That's why I don't... You're not getting it. I didn't say agnostic and atheists don't have morals. I didn't say they can't account for morals. I said there's no morals that they have not. Yeah, without God, you have, there is no morals. There's no constant morality. Morality is an involved friend. Morality is a constant that's given to us by God. It's in your conscience. God gave you a conscience. God made you in His image. He made you a moral being. He made you a logical being. He made you a reasonable being. Not people, people is the problem. See, if you're an atheist and you're saying this is right, or agnostic, that this is right, this is wrong. You're saying there's a standard in the middle which determines what is right and what is wrong. Now, if someone's come along and says, well, I think rape is okay. Now, now, now hold on a second now. If morality doesn't come, if it doesn't come from God, it comes from within you, like most atheists and agnostics will say, because within, then what right do you have to tell the rapist they're wrong? What right do you have to tell the murder they're wrong? Because you don't call relativism because I don't cause pain to other beings. Who says pain is wrong? Causing pain is suffering to other beings. Now wait a minute now. Now, now are you a higher form of animals? Are you a higher form of animals? I'm more evolved. Are you a vegetarian? I'm a vegan. You are? Yeah. It's ironic. Most people who are atheists are agnostic, not vegetarian. But if you're a higher form of animal, then you're killing cows every time you eat a burger. You're killing chickens every time you eat a chicken. And if it's wrong to kill humans, and humans are higher form of animals, it's wrong to kill chickens. It's wrong to kill cows. Because they're your ancestors. Wait, no, wait, I'm wrong. Are you vegetarian? No, I'm not. I don't believe I'm the same as the animal. I'm made in the image of God. Like everyone else here. You have an image to keep up, friend. And because you haven't kept that image up, you've chosen to go astray and live the way you want to live. You've chosen to fornicate. You've chosen to get drunk. To be a homosexual. To lie. Are you a homosexual, sir? Yeah, I think so. You're lying to me. You're not really a homosexual, I can tell. Yeah, so if you're a homosexual, you're a pet friend. Now turn to your sin. Turn to Christ. Break off of you mercy today. Forgiveness and grace. Most of you reject his love. You reject his grace. You reject his mercy. So the Bible says you love your sin. But what did it profit for the man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the end? And most of you are going after everything you can go after. But in the end, you'll lose your soul. You're going to hell forever. And I'll tell you this. Hell's a long time. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's forever. You get it? Good. Then repent, sinner, if you get it. Repent. No, you might only be a hundred years old if you're lucky. But that's nothing compared to forever, friends. Nothing compared to forever. But Christ commands you to repent. Return from your sins and forsake it all together and turn to Christ.